the digestive system, a fascinating and complex process. It's a nuclear reactor of the human body. Without it, the cells would have no energy to survive, let alone work. Two scientists, Kenneth and Justin, decide to explore the digestive system through simulations using household items. This is disgusting. <laughs> this is nasty. Digestion starts in the mouth, where a mouthful of burger is bit off and enters the mouth. In the mouth, represented by the mortar, chewing begins with the molars grinding the food down, represented by the pestle, as well as the tongue moving the food around the mouth, represented by the spoon. Simultaneously, saliva enters the mouth to moisten and chemically digest the food. Saliva is made up of water, mucus, and amylase. Amylase is an enzyme that takes starch as its substrate and produces glucose as its product. Then, the food enters the throat. Food enters the throat, portrayed by the funnel, when the tongue, portrayed by the spoon, forces the food down, also known as the act of swallowing. After food is swallowed, it enters the esophagus, portrayed by the clear umbrella bag. Then, food is pushed down the esophagus as peristalsis occurs. Peristalsis is the involuntary movement of muscles. This means that you will still be able to eat food when you're upside down, although we strongly suggest not to attempt to do so. When the food reaches the end of the esophagus, the relaxation of the cardia allows food to enter the stomach, represented by the cutting of the umbrella bag and opening of the Ziploc bag. The stomach then releases gastric juices, the red liquid, onto the bolus. The bolus is then churned by peristalsis, which is the action of shaking the sealed Ziploc bag, and becomes a slurry substance. This slurry substance is called chyme. The chyme enters the first stage of the small intestine, the duodenum, where the gallbladder injects bile and the pancreas injects pancreatic juices. These substances contain protease, lipase, and amylase, which chemically digest the macronutrients. These digested macronutrients pass through the jejunum with the aid of peristalsis. Finally, in the ileum, these macronutrients are absorbed by semi-permeable walls that has an area of roughly a tennis court. This large surface area is created by villi, small projections sticking out from the walls within the ileum. The small intestine is portrayed by the leg section of the pantyhose, while the paper towel indicates the macronutrients being absorbed through the semi-permeable wall by the process of diffusion. What's left of the chyme then enters the large intestine, also known as the colon. The remainder is usually undigested fibers, dead cells of the inner walls, salt, bile pigments, and water. The water and salts are absorbed, while bacteria in the large intestine eat the remainder, producing vitamins and digesting the fibers. The large intestine is represented by the foot of the pantyhose, while the absorption of water, salt, vitamins, and fibers is represented by the sponge. Anything that isn't absorbed by the small and large intestine is stored in this rectum. The rectum is like a container, a styrofoam cup, in which it stores feces until the act of defecation. Muscular movements similar to those in peristalsis eject the feces from the rectum and into the toilet bowl. In certain situations, the feces reverse back into the colon, where further absorption occurs before the act of defecation. Okay, flush it. Flush it. Goodbye. Yay! That's the end of the digestive system. Yay. Interesting. Very disgusting. And oddly, you know, a cool experiment because, you know, we never really see our food going down the esophagus and everything like that. And, and through our and digestive through our eyes, system. Yeah.